hello hello and welcome or welcome back i'm so freaking happy to see you guys and today we are going to be talking about you saw the title our predictions for the tay universe as it is and beyond so without further ado let's get into it we have a four part set list here yes i have notes because we just have a lot to discuss and i have a lot of thoughts to parse through and so i really had to just like distill them down to make sure that this wasn't gonna be another 45 minute video we are going to talk about where we are right now in the tay universe the remainder of 2024 and our predictions for reputation tv debut tv and tiny little inklings sprinklings of maybe ts12 let's Go! So where do we stand right now in the Tay universe? Where are we? What are things looking like? Let's first, of course, we must talk about Tavis. Not only Tavis, like she is out and about supporting her man, doing what she wants, but she is out and about living her life and loving it. She is still hustling, no doubt. We have the last run of the tour starting the weekend that this video is going up, but she's also doing her, going where she wants, with who she wants, and that was very much not the way she moved for years but she is so far out of that now and our girl seems to be loving living her life in addition we are still very much in the tortured poets department era she wore the kind of like down bad like abduction gorgeous dress to the vmas the anthology vinyl release has been announced for target at the end of november along with an eras tour book which we're going to talk about both of those a little bit more later but there's plenty of content within tortured poets department to keep this era going and live in this era for longer which is clearly what she would like to do especially we've been begging for the anthology on vinyl and we finally know that we are getting it she threw that bone to target as so many artists very often do but kind of going further down that road with this special tour book and anthology vinyl double release at the end of november at target tortured poets department and the heiress tour are kind of inextricably linked in a very different way than like i feel like midnights and the heiress tour are inextricably linked i could very much see doing like a whole video just about how like midnight Nights and the Eras Tour and the Tortured Poets Department and the Eras Tour are kind of all this big moving Tay universe thing over the past two years. Because of the connection between those two, we are still also very much in the Eras Tour era. Because of the layers of the Tay universe, we can be in the Tortured Poets Department era, the Eras Tour era, and the Taylor's Version era all at the same time. So the tour is still going. Like I said, we are kicking up the last leg of it starting the weekend this video is going out and the last show is scheduled for December 8th in Canada. So all that to say, make no mistake, I truly believe we will be in the Eras Tour era until at least Christmas. You know, the Eras Tour is this gigantic once in a lifetime worldwide phenomenon that has really spanned and swallowed up the last two years and really kind of consumed the Midnight's album and the Tortured Poets album in the way that we are always going to think of the Eras era and they are going to be connected to the Eras Tour in that way whenever we think of those eras moving forward. And so I would be absolutely shocked if the tour didn't end with a bang of some sort. I think we are going to see a last burst of love for the journey and the phenomenon that has been the Eras Tour, which will definitely include the already announced Target book, but I could also see it including a vinyl of the show possibly, which is definitely something that I would get. Um, maybe another show poster and maybe, maybe one more thing. I don't see a ton of merch being released because I think that if people want Eras Tour merch, they really want them to buy out the things that they have already released. But I could see like maybe one more special all-encompassing piece of memorabilia being released along with maybe the show on vinyl to wrap up the era's era. I would be really, really surprised if we didn't see that. But also, as we're talking about the rest of this year, we have to go into what is obviously on all of our minds, and that is when we'll be getting reputation. When we think about predicting anything in the Tay universe, we have to remember what I like to think of as kind of at this point a golden rule within the Tay universe. Obviously, the first golden rule is never forget the essence of your spark, but the second golden rule is that Taylor's career is a mastermind's game of optimizing results in order to solidify her legacy. She may be a lover who is too soft for all of it, but she is also a hustler, a capitalist, and a mastermind, and fully developed minds know that you can be both of those at once and you can hold both at once within a person. So when we talk about reputation TV, what optimizes results? 
for this release? What is going to create and meet the most hunger for this release? And also, when is the time for her to step away after providing us a gluttonous amount of food, you know, for the past two years to really allow us to be hungry again? When does this release work in with a break that we know she's going to need to take to combat fatigue and overexposure. So that being said, when I thought about it, I originally thought that we were not going to hear about it this year. We are not going to hear a peep about Reputation, Taylor's version in 2024, because the Heirs era and the Tortured Poets era really need and deserve their time to breathe, and she really is wanting to give them that this holiday season with the Target releases and move on from there. The Target releases actually kind of for a second solidified that for me, but then I thought longer. And I realized that if we do not hear about it, before the end of the year. That would mean that we're going to get a break from Taylor after eras starting in the beginning of this new year. And then we're going to jump back in with the release of Reputation and possibly debut TV. And the only really optimal time I could see that happening in is next fall. And that's just because I feel like a spring release would not be a long enough break. We know she's certainly not doing any more like announcements at the Grammys. So a spring announcement or release wouldn't be really like a long enough breath after the last two years. And people really haven't had a chance to miss her for a long time, especially with her supporting, her just going out and supporting her boyfriend, getting a ton of attention. And so I would just have a really hard time seeing her wrapping up the era's era and then continuing into an announcement or a release in the the spring and I really feel like if she has any inkling whatsoever of TS12 coming down the pipe which I would be shocked if she didn't because she is just such a writer she is just such a natural creator the cutoff for awards season is August 30th and so I feel like we have to have the Taylor's version project wrapped up by August 30th because she doesn't like to compete with herself during awards season the only time she's done that was with Midnight's and Speak Now Taylor's version most likely because she didn't expect Speak Now to be an awards darling in any way. That's not really what that was in the similar way that I don't think that's what debut TV is going to be. And so having that and Reputation TV being what are released in the current Grammy cycle that we're in between last August 30th and the coming August 30th in 2025, I feel like that is where we are going to see Reputation and debut TV both have to fit in because if they did not, that would mean that they would be in the next Grammy cycle starting next September, which ostensibly would house TS-12, whether that was what she loves to do, a winter release, and then have a full year of hype and love and development of the plot for it before the awards, or another spring release, a summer release, whatever she decides to do with that. We really kind of need to get these out of the way before next August, and so I can't find a place that would fit and make sense for Reputation TV to come out other than maybe next summer with debut TV and having them both be summer albums, but I feel like debut TV is so clearly more a summer album than Reputation that that would just kind of sit oddly. I don't know, that just doesn't feel absolutely perfect and like kismet to me. There's been so much hype and so much anticipation for the Rep TV release that I would be shocked if the drop of it wasn't as clever as we thought it would be, which is why I think that we will be hearing about Reputation TV this year, and I think that it will be on one of the following dates. There are four different possibilities because I'm crazy. There's something about New Year's Day that I just think would be really, really perfect to drop this Taylor's version or just like connect it to New Year's Day in some way. So I think that is either going to be announced on New Year's Day or released on New Year's Day. I think that it will either be announced at the last tour show on December 8th to be released on New Year's Day of 2025. The advantages to that are that we would get the like rep TV outfit reveal, the new reputation bodysuit that we've been like clowning for and begging for. We would get that for like the last show and that would just be so good and so satisfying. But not only that, announcing it that early would get the most time for Christmas 
pre-orders to build up. So December 8th still gives people enough time because it is a pre-order to go online and order that as a Christmas present for all of the Swifties in their life. That is such an easy slam dunk of a Swifty Christmas present. I could see that being a really strategic way of not necessarily stepping on the Eras Tour and the Anthology vinyl releases because I think the people who really want those are going to buy them and get them for their Christmas gifts when they are released on the 30th. But then on the 8th, I think the same people will probably also pre-order the Reputation vinyl merch, etc. I could be wrong, but I feel like that's kind of advantageous timing because it does put for the anthology vinyl and end of the Eras tour to breathe, as well as still collecting some of those pre-Christmas pre-orders and post-Christmas pre-orders as well, boosting the numbers, which we know she loves to do. A really loud truck was just like sitting there the entire time that I was talking about this possibility. But the second possibility I think is that she announces it as a birthday gift on her birthday on December 13th, five days later from the end of the Eras tour. So we don't get the reputation bodysuit, but we do get maybe like a little hint possibly um, on the last day of the tour, or maybe we just get absolutely nothing, who knows? But she announces it on her birthday, December 13th, and then it is to be released New Year's Day. Again, this gives even more time for the end of the Eras tour releases and the anthology final to breathe, boost those numbers, get those orders in. And like I said, I do think the same people will still contribute to the reputation pre-order. Possibility three is that she announces it on Christmas itself. It's not a birthday gift. It is a Christmas gift to be released on New Year's Day and the advantages of that. Again, it would get a ton of time. All of the Christmas shopping would go entirely to the end of eras and the anthology vinyl. And then the after Christmas money would be what would be going to boosting reputation pre-sales. And the final possibility is that I could see a New Year's Day announcement for a Valentine's Day release. The advantages of that would be that we would have a ton of time for, like I said, the end of the Eras tour and the anthology vinyl to breathe, fully give those the end of the year to have their spotlight, have their time, and then slide into Reputation TV while pulling up to the Grammys with a Reputation TV outfit because that would be between the announcement and the release if the release was on Valentine's Day and the Grammys is on February 2nd. I don't know, that, that excites me. I feel like that might excite Taylor too. I could be wrong, but that would make me very happy. So those are kind of the four possibilities that I see if we were to hear about Reputation TV by the end of this year or like by New Year's Day 2025, I guess. Um, and the reason that I really got so into that and thinking about the possibilities is that there's something about a New Year's Day release that would just tie up the era's era so perfectly. Like I could see the announcement being about how the last two years have been a whirlwind of emotional highs and lows and how after it all she never wants us to become strangers and how she will be picking up bottles on New Year's Day with all of the people who were there with her throughout the huge chaotic once in a lifetime party that has been the last two years. So that being said, just because I feel like that fits so well and I can like see that in my head, I also want to talk about my predictions for like the aesthetic and the vibe of Reputation TV because I think a New Year's Day release, um, if you are not aware, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're aware that New Year's Day is the last song on the album Reputation. Um, I didn't say that, um, I just kind of started going because I assumed we were all there, but New Year's Day is the last song on the album Reputation. There's a line in it that says, please don't ever become a stranger whose laugh I will recognize anywhere. Candle wax and Polaroids on the hardwood floor, you and I from the night before, you and I forevermore. And it is about picking up bottles with someone on New Year's Day and having them still be the person that is there with you, helping you clean up after the party is over. The person that is not just there for the shiny gold nights, but is there for the 
rainy mornings and the less sparkly times that come afterwards. So I could see the theme of that really being highlighted in the release. That just sounds like such a sweet and heartfelt thing that would really slide perfectly in to the party that has been the Eras Tour. When I think about it was so nice having big parties, everyone swimming in a champagne sea and that being the Eras Tour, that just fits so incredibly well with so many things in Reputation and where we are right now that I feel like the New Year's Day release with this release being the after the party is over of the Eras tour and having the theme be kind of the picking up of the bottles and shades of gray and candlelight and the ties were black, the lies were white, illusionists and magicians having secret moments in crowded rooms, phone lights up my nightstand in the black, they have no idea about me and you because they see me as poison ivy when really I'm your daisy. I could see all of that really just being the aesthetic of the new reputation. I just see like dripping yellow candles and like sparkly black and boozy dark intimate rooms and secrets between two hearts that like onlookers have no idea about. I could see that kind of being the side of the coin that we lean into for the aesthetic of Reputation TV because she's been so good previously on Taylor's versions about really renewing a record by leaning into a theme and an undertone that was there. It was just secondary in the original release and so like with Red TV it was kind of more like a vintagey twee aesthetic for the original release but then for the Taylor's version we had a very vintagey autumnal because that was a vibe that was there but it was just kind of an undertone that was very much present in All Too Well and kind of Inklings and other songs but she really pulled it up and emphasized that on the Taylor's version. Same with 1989 Taylor's version. It was a very New York City, big city girl, welcome to New York vibe when it was first released neon lights and the seagulls were definitely a moment the coney island vibe was definitely a moment it was there but she really kind of took that and pulled that out and highlighted that on the taylor's version release and it still felt true to the album because it had been present there all along but it was something that she chose to highlight and lean into for the branding to really kind of make it anew and i could definitely see her taking a step away from the newspaper print extra extra top of the headlines batty thing to looking under that and being like that's what they see but here is the love story that's really going on when everyone else is like at the party downstairs or as they're making eye contact across the room I could just so so see that beautifully so yeah that's kind of all of my swirling thoughts about reputation taylor's version and the release and the aesthetic i'm very much at this moment attached to the whole new year's day thing even though that is objectively my least favorite song on that album i still like it don't get me wrong i really like reputation um as an album just feel like with the mood we're at with taylor right now and the things about the album that kind of click into that and the timing it would all just make a lot of sense and it would be a nice final push to kind of tie up the era's era thing and if we had a little surprise drop of debut with it everything would be tied up in a nice bow and we could take a break at the beginning of 2025 and start afresh with ts12 whenever she pleased during the next grammy cycle that starts in august of next year so like i said she could do what she loves to do and have the winter drop or wait till the spring summer etc we would have a nice big breath to get hungry again and completely start fresh. For Reputation, I do think we are going to get three vault tracks and maybe one. I would really love to see like one acoustic version of one of the Reputation songs because they are so incredibly unacoustic. I would just love to hear that. I feel like we got a real treat during the Reputation tour in some ways with that, so I would really love to see that like kind of added on um, in addition to the vault tracks. And in terms of music videos, I have no idea when the hell she would have filmed one of those. Um, so unless it's being released later this year, I later in 2025, I don't see that happening personally and also like the look what you made me do music video is kind of so iconic I feel like it's a little bit hard to follow that um like you're not going to replicate it so unless you do a new one where you say look what you made me do you made me re-record my entire fucking catalog that would be kind of iconic but we'll see
The thing about debut TV, which we're gonna go into talking about now, is that it is not necessarily, I think we all know, going to be about the music first and foremost. It is going to be mostly about a love letter and a celebration to that old version of her and the love and the work that it took to make that first record and all of the love and the work that has been done since then to get her career to where it is now as well. It's how her love for this work has grown and changed since then and how she's grown and changed since then and how we as fans have grown and changed with her and been there since then, some of us. You know, that really I think is going to be a big part of where debut TV comes from along with it being kind of the final bow on top of the Taylor's Version project and kind of saying goodbye to that nostalgia. I could see it being thrown in with reputation at the beginning of next year, end of this year, to just kind of end the eras looking back, Taylor's version looking back, all of that be done. We're not looking back anymore. We're taking a breath and we are starting anew with something different later on in 2025. Could very much see that being an option, but I think we all know that debut TV is very much a warm weather album. Um, she's very much a sundresses and cowboy boots girl. Um, she's like near the water with like butterflies on the front. And I just feel like so much of the imagery is just very like summer Southern um, days and nights. And so I I could see there being like a release of debut TV really anywhere between May and August of next year just because I could see her taking advantage of the warm weather vibes to poke her head back out if she really wants to give Reputation TV its space, take a breath from there, and then release in summer. But it would really depend on what she has coming down the pipe for TS12 when she would like to release that because releasing in summer and winter of the same year I think would be a lot after the Airs tour. But you know, when she has stuff to release, she has stuff to release. I really think that is how we got Tortured Poets. Like it was not necessarily planned, but all of the stuff that caused it to be written wasn't planned either. And she had it and she made it and she was ready and they went with it. You know, I think they had other things planned, but then this is what happened instead. So because of all the looking back that we've done with the Eras tour and with the Taylor's version, I really feel that she probably wants PS12 to have its own stage and be its own thing. So the further it is separated from the Taylor's version projects, the better I feel like, which is why I feel like we are definitely going to get both of these TVs before August of next year. But honestly, I could see it just being overloaded with Taylor at the end of this year, getting them all out before Valentine's Day and having a huge break and a huge breath from Taylor releases to just munch on all of the food that we've been given or she comes back with TS12 anew. I'm hoping we're gonna get three or four vault tracks from debut. The predictions and possibilities for that were gonna have to be like its own little video because there's just too much to talk about, I'm sure. Um, you've seen many, many people talk about it already. There are just a lot of like unreleased songs um, and then like a golden child, of course, that we're all like kind of hoping for. So we'll definitely be talking about that. But I think that is enough. The actions of one Miss Taylor Swift for today. Please let me know what you thought of these predictions and what your own are. Obviously, um, she's a person and I am not a psychic. I am but a little girly um, who is a Swifty and a fan and likes to talk about these things. And I have lots of thoughts. And so I love to share them with all of you so that I can hear your thoughts as well. So thank you guys so much for being here. Please let me know what you think down in the comments. If you would like to see more from me, I am posting on TikTok every single day. Thank you once again so, so very much for being here. I always say I see every single little like, every single little comment, and every single subscribe, and every single one makes my heart soar. I really love doing this, and I love talking to you guys. So thank you so much for being here, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. We have debut TV predictions, we have Lana Lore, and we have some Taylor Swift Halloween costume commentary coming up. So stick around, give it a like if you liked it, subscribe if you would like to see more, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Mwah.